Recently, Gaiju proposed to make consumables expire, which caused mass outrage from the War Thunder community. So today I thought we'd take a look at the history of War Thunder's biggest controversies. An old employee of Gaijin Entertainment is Pavel Kulikov. Yeah, I'm Pavel Kulikov, producer of our founder. Yeah. In July 2015, Pavel made several false DMCA claims against a Russian War Thunder YouTuber called Alkanafta. Pavel filed so many claims, in fact, that YouTube automatically took down Alkan's channel. Apparently, Pavel and Alkanafta had beef from 2013, when Alkanafta apparently used his followers to attack Gaijin social media accounts, but Alkanafta denied it at the time, and I can't find any information on this myself today. Looking at his channel, nothing exists older than a year ago. However, everything involved here is in Russian, so I easily could have missed something. DMCA claims are the first legal step in copyright disputes and can eventually end up in court, so making false bad faith DMCA claims is not the brightest idea you can have. For game companies, filing DMCA claims is pretty routine as terrible mobile clones using stolen assets pop up all the time, so it's understandable why Pavel as a producer of War Thunder had access to the tools to file these DMCA claims. After Alkanafta's channel was taken down, Gaijin CEO Anton Nudenseff stepped in to personally fix the situation. He contacted YouTube to reverse the takedown requests and the situation was resolved in just three days. Anton went to the effort of actually phoning Alkanafta and apologised over the phone, and since he wasn't earning ad revenue while his channel was down, Anton offered to compensate him for this time but Alkanafta declined this offer. After his channel was restored, it turned out false DMCA claims wasn't the only dodgy thing Pavel was up to. Pavel had offered Alkanafta a deal with War Thunder to help grow his channel, but the contract was utterly insane. He was offered a video partnership where he would release four videos a week and would not include insults and materials discrediting the reputation of War Thunder that may cause damage to the rights holder of the game. But even worse, if the channel owner breaches these terms and conditions, the channel owner must pay a a fine of $10,000 for each case of breach. Anton said that it hadn't been reviewed by him or his legal team and that this was just Pavel working alone. Pavel Kulikov was ultimately fired from his position and hasn't been working for Gaijin for years but you do have to wonder if Pavel really did act alone in this situation or if he was just used as a scapegoat to protect the company. It doesn't really make sense for Gaijin to willfully want to censor the opinion of the internet but I knew someone would comment on it so I thought I'd mention it. On June 5th, 2018, the Vehicle Modifications Upgrade dev blog was posted to the official Gaijin website. Vehicle Consumable Modifications received so much backlash that Gaijin deleted the announcement post just hours after it went live. Lucky for us, someone screenshotted the post and it's still here today. The update proposed to introduce pre-battle training and permanent modification upgrades. The pre-battle training was an upgrade that improved all the modifications and the effect would last for one battle. Think of it sort of like an XP booster, so you can imagine how frustrating it would have been to activate a pre-battle training and a 500% booster only to be fully updated or have the server crash. Meanwhile, the modification upgrade permanently applied an upgrade to your vehicle. You could upgrade parts, FPE, crew replenishment, airframe, cover, new cannons and machine guns. The exact effect of the upgrade was never published officially, but data miners digging around on the 1.79 dev server were able to find some data. Some of the buffs weren't too bad, just giving you a 2% buff here and there, but for FPE, extinguish time is cut in half, parts let you repair 10% faster, aircraft airframes were 5% less likely to have your tail section fall off, and both FPE and crew replenishment were given an extra charge, meaning you could put out three fires and get two extra crew. These upgrades would have been obtainable via the Warbond shop and then sold on the Gaijin market. The upgrades were blatantly pay to win since you could just buy them on the market and not every player has that as an option. But more importantly, it went against the entire idea of historical accuracy that War Thunder tries so hard to maintain. Gaijin were genuinely serious about implementing this and the remnants of this dev blog can still be seen in the game today. For a long while, having a red pilot made your plane near uncontrollable and it was theorized that this was possibly to do with an in-air pilot healing mechanic that may have been implemented later on. Fortunately red pilot debuffs were removed from the game a long time ago but the FPE cooldowns are still in the game today. The cooldowns were implemented on the 1.79 Project X dev server in preparation for consumables that never arrived. FPU cooldowns aren't really a negative but it's an interesting bit of trivia about the FPE mechanics in the game. 
Speaking of FPE, stock vehicles are always a contentious topic for the entire community. Some vehicles range from not really being affected by stock syndrome to being near unplayable until spaded. Around the time of update 1.71, Gaijin was moving more into the modern era and the way that modification cost was determined was a simple scaling system. However, as more and more modern vehicles got added, research costs ballooned into insanity. The game reached a point where you'd have to play potentially 30 plus battles just to get parts alone, all while using stock shells. Feedback on the forum and YouTube videos were made but the player base felt they weren't being heard and the situation came to a head when every comment section of anything remotely related to Gaijin was spammed by give free parts and FPE. This included the official War Thunder channel where during a live stream the entire chat was free parts and FPE. Sean, who at the time ran the streams, had enough and made the historic statement of absolute smooth brain. Yeah, FPE in yeah. parts, free FPE in parts, like why not give everybody a free Abrams tank to, you know, if we're doing that. Give everybody an Abrams give everybody a t80b you know and then then some parts and how about some golden eagles like that's the point this mechanic was always in the game so i really wait, don't wait, understand wait, that we'll like give everybody every vehicle in the game and then we don't need to worry about that at all do we? that's true it's kind of understandable sean reacted this way he was just trying to do his job and just trying to run a live stream as part of his job and making the decision on whether or not parts and FPE should be reduced in price was nothing to do with him. Frustration aside, the statements he made poured petrol onto an open fire and the whole situation blew up in Gaijin's face. Ultimately, Gaijin responded very well to the situation and made some pretty major changes. They first made it so you could research FPE right after getting parts instead of a second tier 1 mod. Then, the research cost of parts and FPE was massively reduced, particularly for top tier vehicles, and the ability for light tanks and squad mates to repair friendlies was implemented into the game. Fast forward 3 years and the same ability to perform firefighting duties has also been added. The best part about this whole thing is that parts became the default module for unlocking instead of tracks because the amount of time I unlocked a new vehicle back in the day only to accidentally unlock tracks instead of parts was very annoying. Now, the next topic will probably get the video demonetized, so if you're enjoying the video so far, please do consider pressing that subscribe button, because in the last month, a quarter million unique viewers watched the channel and only 2,700 of them decided to subscribe. Today, the in-game decals for flags cost 500 GE and all decals have a maximum size. But back in 2015, decals could be scaled to an unlimited size and things like this American flag M8 were very common. Limits on decal size was implemented because of tensions between Russian and Ukrainian players. In February 2015, a post made by forum administrator Scarpa announced that flags would be made purchasable for GE due to seeing too many players using them in ways to instigate a national argument. Gaijin obviously didn't want to get involved in politics, but it's clear that this is in relation to the hostile annexation of Crimea in 2014, as Russian and Ukrainian players were team killing each other aggressively over this international political situation. Along with the maximum size for decals, team killing was also removed from ground forces and the game hasn't really been the same since. It's a shame that the actions of a small group can affect the international player base and that we don't get to see these silly looking vehicles anymore. I'd love Gaijin to make a system where the maximum size of decals was relative to the size of the vehicle you're placing them on, because placing decals on a mouse can look a little strange sometimes while an R3 can easily be made bright red. Also, it would be lovely to see regional pricing for flags to allow players in all countries to show off their national pride without it being unreasonably expensive for their local economy. What's the furthest you'd go to win an online argument? Would you risk 14 years in prison? Well, that's exactly what happened when Fionor, a Challenger 2 commander in the Royal Tank Regiment, did exactly that. If you aren't already aware, Fear Not posted on the War Thunder forums with a document containing information showing that the protection of the Challenger 2 wasn't modelled correctly. But the problem was the document hadn't been fully declassified. Senior technical moderator Templar was in contact with the Ministry of Defence Abbey Wood, which is a building, not a person by the way, who confirmed that the unclassified stamp was not genuine and the document had not been released under an FOI. FOI standing for Freedom of Information Request, which is the mechanism in which UK citizens can request public access to government documents. This was all over the news and the subreddit when it happened, but I decided to try and do a little bit more digging. The big news of this story is the potential 14 year maximum prison sentence that comes with breaching the official Secrets Act. I actually happened to be in the same squadron with Fear Not back in 2017, so I reached out to him to ask him some questions. I asked him if there was any chance of prison time and he was of the opinion that the news articles using the 14 year figure was simply clickbait. We spoke a little more about the situation, but as it's still ongoing, he asked me to not publicise all of the details right now. Interestingly enough, 
Even more recently, a Leclerc crewman also posted classified documents about the turret rotation speed on the forums. And there was a German guy who got in a little bit of trouble with the German police when he provided a bit too much help to Gaijin when they were modelling the Eurocopter Tiger. Now, a controversy I haven't talked about is when Gaijin banned a player for cheating, but he was completely innocent. You're going to want to click on this video to find out all about that. <laughs> 